From this moment on, everything that God has ever created using words, you can say the same words from God, speaking it through your spirit, through your mouth. It's as if God is speaking. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg, and we have had an awesome time looking at the power of confession, that law, the law of confession. This whole kingdom is designed around laws, and the very law of faith is activated by the law of confession. We've had a look here at Romans chapter 10. Every day the Bible says in verse 6 that righteousness of faith speaks. And he tells us how it speaks. Verse 8, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. See, this is what I want you to get a hold of. The word of faith faith is not a department of Christianity. It's not a, a religious movement. It's not one, some of those church, oh, those are the word of faith people. No, the word of faith is this entire Bible. God is the word. That's in John chapter 1, verse 1. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So when you hear God, you hear his word, you're hearing faith. He is a God of faith. And that is the word that we preach. It is the word of faith. It's not just the Bible. It's not just scriptures. It is a spoken word. And therefore, he says, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession. That word confess talks about coming into agreement together with the word and then speaking it. Now, why is this so important to know? We started having a look yesterday and we saw in Genesis chapter 1 that God, that's exactly how God created. That's who he is. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 3, we read that, that, have a look at verse 3, by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. The, words were, the worlds were framed. Is this, everything that you see was created by the word. We saw that in Genesis 1. God said, and there was. You go through Genesis 1 and just do this as your own homework. Every time you see God said, underline it, and then underline things like, and it was, and this happened, and then this showed up. You'll see God said, and so it was. God said, and this happened. God said, and it showed. And that, that's the whole point I'm making here. Everything you see was created by an initial spoken word. Now, of course, through the years, you know, if you think of the table made of wood, that wood came from a tree, and that tree came out of a seed. And that seed came off a tree that grew up from a seed that fell off another tree that came out of a seed. It came off a tree, out of a seed, out of a tree, out of a seed, off a tree, out of a seed, all the way through the ages, right back to that very first tree standing in the Garden of Eden. And that tree grew up out of a seed, and that seed that was created was spoken, it was a spoken seed. Because that very first seed, where would that have come from? There wasn't a tree in the natural yet. But when God said, tree be, that thing was put into motion. And so the very first tree came out of the spoken word of God. And then built into that tree was the continuous manifestation and action. Now get a hold of this. God put it in motion. But who decides where the tree is growing? Well, of course, in nature, the trees go wherever, you know, any plant where pollen is taken by the insects or the wind blows a seed somewhere. But you think of a farmer, he can take those same seeds and on purpose he can decide, I don't just want anything growing in this field. I want to grow grapes. And he can decide to plant in a way in line and rows, and he can on purpose produce grapes, which means every year he can expect grapes because he made a decision from today on, I'm producing grapes. And in his action, in his sowing, he produced the right grapes. Well, the same way in our lives, God has given us promises. He spoke it. The first time God said he'll never leave anyone or forsake them, he said that for all. 
His word is yes and amen, and he's not a respecter of persons. If he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, it is settled. When he says, I'll provide your need, it is settled. When he said, by Jesus stripes you heal, it is settled. Now that's put into motion, right? It's ready. So when Jesus died on that cross, in that death and resurrection, God said, once Jesus said, it is finished, the word says, God is satisfied. That's what it means when it says that he was propitiation. God is satisfied, all sin is paid for. So it's set in motion. Jesus has done everything he can do for the entire world to be saved. But now how are they going to know about it? And that's where Paul said, how will they know unless a preacher is sent to speak it? And so by me speaking it now, somebody on this program will hear my voice They will hear that Jesus loves them, died for them, rose from the dead, and they will give their life to Jesus. The moment they do that, the moment they say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, that salvation already exists. But when they said it, it became theirs, and you were born again. And the moment you're born again, now that salvation is yours, and it continues. But you see how you had to activate it? Now, the same way with every other promise of God, He gives you the Word. He has your Bible full of the promises of God. Everything you need for life, for your marriage, for your business, for your children, for health, for provision, finances, everything. It's all in you. All I have to do now is find it and now come into agreement and speak it. And the moment you do that, you're activating what God does. Remember, we saw in Hebrews chapter 1. Let's go have a look at this again. This is, if you can get this, this is so powerful. Hebrews chapter 1, and look at verse 3. Who being in the brightness of His glory, who is He talking about? That's Jesus, the Son of God. In the brightness of His glory, in the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power. Now, If you haven't yet, underline that. Upholding all things by the word of His power. Now, we underlined that yesterday. Now I want you to take your pen and circle the word. Because we could think that God does everything because of His power. No, it's done by the word of His power. So when you think He's upholding it, upholding it, that means everything's still working. You think about this creation. God said, light be, and then He put everything in motion. The, the, the star and the moon, uh, the sun, the moon, all the planets, everything running at high speeds, just running and re- revolving around each other, orbiting, not one planet running into another planet, no planet running into the sun by accident. It's, it's working, it's functioning. Everything is, is working and operating. Everything on, on earth, uh, the baby that was born today, came from a seed that was implanted nine months ago. That whole process of life, God doesn't have to say to each baby, baby be, baby be. No, He spoke it in the beginning. He said to Adam, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, take dominion. That was created in the man. And that has been propagated all the way through. But notice, His word, that one word spoken by God is what's keeping it in action. Not just His power, the word of His power. And that's how powerful words are. Come and have a look now at Psalm 138. Psalm 138. Now, I'm saying all of this so that we can have our hearts charged with faith because when you understand this and your heart is charged with faith, you can use it to your advantage and put it into action. Listen to verse 1. This is David writing here. He says, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship to your holy name, to your holy temple, and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. You have magnified your word above all your name. You hearing that? Now, we know scriptures where it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Whatever you ask for in my name, I will do it. 
Whenever you ask for my, in my name, my Father will do it that your joy may be full. You, you understand the name of Jesus is powerful. The name of God is powerful. You are only as good as your name. You see, when I say a name, let's say you know someone from your family and someone mentions that name to you, you don't think, if I say Alan, you don't think A-L-L-A-N. No, when you say Alan, you remember you, who that person, what they look like, what they've done in your life, how they've responded, things the way they do it, uh, their integrity, their character. A lot of things is evoked in their name. So if I said to somebody, go to this uh, shop down there, I've already spoken to them, I want you to fetch something, tell them Alan Bag sent you. They go in there and say, Alan Bag sent me. That name will put them into action. They say, oh yes, this is for you. But if I had a bad name, they'd say, no, I'm not interested in what he's got to say. No, when I say Alan Bag, all my good faith and integrity, all of that goes into action, and they then give you what you've come to ask for. Now, that's how powerful a name is. And yeah, David says, you magnify your word higher than your name. In other words, God's name is dependent on His word. Now, word, remember, is spoken. So God is only as good as his name. That's what he said. He's exalting his word above his name. If my name's going to work, it's because my word is working. And so once God says something, you can take that and stand on it. If God ever said he's healed you, you can take that. He's not changing that word because if he changes his word, his name is no longer going to be valid. He's refusing to do that. He's going to uphold His name by upholding His Word. And you, if you see God supplies your every need, take it. Believe it. If you see that He is with you, never leaves you, nor forsakes you, never again will you hear out of my mouth, God, where are you? No, He said He'll never leave me. And so I may not feel Him all the time, but I don't have to feel Him. That's not the spirit of faith. That's not what faith does. Our faith knows that even if I don't feel Him, he said, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And therefore, he's right here with me all the time. And so God has completely submitted himself to his word. Now, in that submission to his word, he said in Genesis chapter 1, and you've heard me quote it a few times, but I want to read it to you today. Listen to this. Genesis 1. Now, remember, he said, he said, and it was, and he said, and it was, and he said, and he was. Verse 26. Then God said, here we go. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. How does God have dominion? With His Word. How does God operate? With His Word. And then verse 28, Then God blessed them, and God said, He has that spoken word again, and as He said, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And so God has spoken for them to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth. And you keep reading and you see in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the King James Version says a living soul. Now, that same Hebrew talks about God breathing. It literally takes from with himself the soul, the very essence of God, and breathing that into man. It talks about the word onkelos, O-N-K-E-L-O-S. It's described as a speaking spirit. Get a hold of that. A speaking spirit. When God said, man in our image be. He breathed that through his word. It entered into that man. That body that was created was dead and lifeless. But the moment he, God's breath entered that man as a spirit being, that spirit man came to life and he became a living soul. According to the original Hebrew, he became that speaking spirit created to be just like God. Now, here's what you do. From this moment on, everything that God has ever created using words, you can say the same words from God, speaking it through your spirit, through your mouth, 
It's as if God is speaking. That's why when the disciples were shocked, Jesus had spoken to a tree and the tree listened. Jesus said, you do the same. Have faith in God. Now you see this mountain. You can speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. Don't doubt in your heart. Believe the things that you say will come to pass. You will have what you say. Do the same thing. Family of God, this is the law of confession. It's yours. Believe it. Receive it. Growing it. And use it to your advantage. God's given it to you. Walk in it. I trust you've learned something this week. We all have, and let's walk in the fullness of it. In Jesus' name. I trust that we have learned more about this law of confession. I know I have. Every time I study it, even when I teach it, it just so charges me with faith, and I know that God is true to His Word that if we can get a hold of this concept, we can declare it and cause things to happen in our lives. Now, as you know, Friday is our giving day here at Allen Bag Ministries, and many of you have already sown generously into this ministry. I want to thank you as partners with this ministry. I want you to know you've activated something. Now, take it to another level by confession. Let me show this to you. In Galatians chapter 6, he says in verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Now, there's a powerful principle there, that if we sow something, we will reap. Now, we know that to be true in the natural. If I sow corn seed in the ground, I'm going to get a corn stalk out of it, and corn will grow on it. And I'll get back many more corns that I did before I planted that corn seed, a lot more corn seed I will receive back based on the sowing of the seed. One always produces more. And he's saying here that don't be deceived, God's not mocked. Now, what is he talking about deceived here? Notice said, whatever a man sows. Now, what are we talking about sowing here? There's two ways of sowing. Number one, we see Jesus says in Mark chapter 4, verse 14, the sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. Now, we've been talking about the power of that confession, how important the law of confession is. So as I speak the word of God, I'm sowing the word of God. So right now, I'm a sower sowing the word into your heart. You receiving that word. You've been taught that word. And now you in turn must sow the word. Now, you may not be able to reach as many people as I do. Every time you speak the Word of God to somebody, you are sowing the Word of God, and there is a harvest due on that. The first and most important harvest is the salvation of souls. Secondly, I can trust God for my every provision. Now, let me show that to you. Go back here to Galatians, and he says in chapter 6, Do not be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. You notice the word, do not be deceived. What's that there for? How come that suddenly was put in place? Well, it wasn't suddenly put in place. It leads off verse 6. And verse 6 says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. So this is a potential area where the enemy can deceive us. What's he talking about? Well, verse 6 talks about that when you taught the word of God, that we should give into that word. You'll see that in the Amplified, it says contributing to his support. And so we understand that when we are taught the word, God encourages us to give back into that word. And as you give to that word, you're giving finances so that the ministry can continue, so that the word of God can be preached, so that the word can be sown. So when you give into this ministry, you are actually sowing the word that I'm speaking by your finances. And that's why he's saying, don't be deceived. Whatever you sow, you will reap. You're giving finances, you will reap finances. You're also giving for the word of God to be preached. You will receive the faith from that word. See, he says in verse 8, He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. If all I think about myself with my money is my own life, what I'm going to buy, where I'm going to live, what I'm going to do with this, use it to spend it on myself, selfish, 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 that will lead to corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit 
will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now, you already have eternal life, but this is talking about the life that comes from the Word of God. So as the Word is preached to me, and I give into that ministry so that the Word can continue to be preached, I am sowing that Word. I also reap the life of that Word. And that's why it says, Don't grow weary while doing good, for in due season... We shall reap if we do not lose heart. That's what Paul was talking about in Philippians. We don't have time to go look at that now. But in Philippians, he said to his partners, As you have given into my ministry, you've partnered with me. I, you are a partaker with me of grace. He says in Philippians 4 verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so I want to agree with you today. As you give into this ministry, the details are there on the screen. You can go online. It's very easy to do there. Or you can call our office, let them know what you need to do. I can come into agreement with you now. My God is not mocked. You're sowing for this word to be preached. You are sowing the word of God and you're sowing your finances. And I'm standing in agreement that there is a harvest due to you. God's not mocked. And we're going to pray that right now. And how do we do that? By saying it. So I want you to say every day, every day, after you've given today, every day, you can wake up in the morning and say, I have given into that ministry and I believe that my God shall supply. Because I'm praying that. Anyone that gives into this ministry, every day I pray over you, my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, I've said it. Now, all you have to do is take it, come into agreement as we've studied this week, say, I agree on that word, and I declare, my God has supplied all my need. And now, if two agree touching anything, my Father will do it who's in heaven. Amen. Let's pray that right now. Father, I thank you for my dear partner as they've given into this ministry so generously. You're not mocked. You are not mocked. You've heard their prayer. You've seen the, the seed sown. You've seen the action of that faith. And now we come into agreement. I come into agreement with my friend, with their declaration through their seed that you supply all their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is done. It is yours. You've received it. And now walk in it. And I'm, I'm looking for it. Listen, I, I can already sense there's some testimonies happening right now. Let us know what's happened in your life. I'd love to hear from you. Amen. The Word of God reveals that there is a law of faith and this law works by the law of confession. This is a word creation. Yeah. This is a word kingdom. It is upheld. It is governed by the word. Jesus, the Son of God, revealed that as His children, when we believe His word and speak what He said, we will experience those confessions come to pass. So whether I live or die is determined by how I speak. In this series, Alan Bagg will help you discover the importance of confessions the different types of confessions. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You learn the power of the spoken word and how to apply the law of confession successfully. God has established the system for His children and He built into it the law of confession. And if you understand the law, it works every single time. Get this faith building series by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. I am of the firm conviction that this probably is a huge percentage of whether we're going to succeed in the body of Christ or not. We can live our lives loving Jesus, knowing that He's our Lord and Savior, having confessed Him and been born again and saved. If we had to die at any moment, we would go to heaven. And that's exciting. That's the most important aspect. But once we saved, if we don't know this law, if we don't know how to apply this, we will struggle and battle all our way to heaven. And I don't believe for one moment 
that that is God's desire for you. He has given us so many promises that He wants us to walk this life in a blessed state where we will see His goodness, we will see His provision, we will see His supply, everything that He's given for us to enjoy, health and protection and life, blessing. He wants it to manifest in your life. And so He has given us the ability to walk in it. And He's explained it in His Word. And so this will make it or break it. We have to learn what is that law of confession. And if we get that corrected, we take a huge step forward in the success of our faith. And so that's why I keep encouraging you. Make sure you're listening to these messages every day. Get the series. Listen to it wherever you are in the car. You can play it over and over and over. I have things running in my car all the time. I listen to music now and then. But the more importantly is the word. Why? I want to make sure that I keep hearing it so that when I open my mouth, that's what comes out. Because what comes out my mouth will determine my future. That's the law of confession. So get yours today, study it out, build your faith in it, and watch it transform your life. Well, it is our weekend. We all getting together in our various places of worship. Make sure you are in a great Bible preaching, word of faith, teaching the Bible, speaking the word, standing in agreement with the word, declaring the word, and walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I encourage you, if you are in Cape Town, there's, we've got lots of campuses around now. There should be one nearby you. If there is, you're welcome to drop in and come visit us. And if I'm in the building, please come shake my hand. I'd love to meet with you. Other than that, you have a great weekend. We'll get together again on Monday. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bagg Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Alan Bagg Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.